adopting the sufficiency economy philosophy as the Thai way of life is equivalent to moving Thailand towards becoming the happiest and most hospitable country in the world. The World Happiness Report bases its results on people's assessment of their own lives. The report also considers gross domestic product per capita, health and life expectancy, perceptions of corruption, social support, and the freedom to make life's decisions. While the World Happiness Report is the end result, adopting a sufficiency economy is a means to achieve that result, which is happiness. Initiated by His Majesty King p u m i p o n a d u n y a d e t of Thailand, the sufficiency economy has its roots in Thai culture. Thai people have long been taught how to live their everyday lives with moderation and caution. The philosophy of the sufficiency economy grows out of those general principles. Living life using the sufficiency philosophy as a guideline to finding real happiness is not as complicated as it may seem. But we must first of all understand that this philosophy encompasses three constituents. One moderation. This refers to the state of feeling and being fulfilled. Practically speaking, when production and consumption meet as equals. Nor surplus, shortage, or waste will occur. Two, reasonableness. It is advisable to consider the pros and cons of each situation before making a decision, and to base the decision upon explainable and acceptable facts and figures. Three, immunity to misleading influences and changes. This principle helps us and our community to remain stable and unaffected by outside influences. A feasibility study should be conducted to be aware of possible outcomes, as well as the aforementioned constituents. Knowledge and morality are also key preconditions. This means proper and relevant knowledge must be gathered prior to building strategies and implementing tactics. Meanwhile, morality like honesty, the greater good, fairness, accountability, and the sufficiency of personal and national needs must be taken into account in each decision-making process. This will ensure that we ourselves and our community are trustworthy, resulting in pride and dignity. A sufficiency economy is not aimed at denying growth, competition, connection, or globalization. Instead, it teaches us not to harm ourselves, our community, or others by exploiting human resources and taking excessive advantage of natural resources in order to generate high productivity and profit. Adopting a sufficient lifestyle can be applied to any setting, whether it is agricultural, industrial, financial, or in the service sector. The key is to create the least debt or no debt at all. However, seeking loans is acceptable as long as they are necessary for our basic needs or for the expansion of our business, which will in turn help generate additional income to support our lives and be able to pay back the money and interest to the creditor over time. As mentioned, a sufficiency economy is a means to happiness. It's a philosophy that yields freedom to make life's decisions. But to attain that freedom and real happiness, people must learn how to live an independent lifestyle by earning enough to live on, by growing enough food to eat, and to develop interdependent networks by sharing and caring for one another. In truth. A sufficiency economy is a philosophy to enable us to develop respect for ourselves and gain a ready willingness to show hospitality to others. These are principles that bring happiness to us from within and make it possible for Thailand to top the list as the happiest country in the world.